Hey you guys, what's up? My name's Jason and today I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial on how to create a cool sword asset for your games. Now this sword is going to be digitally painted by hand and it's going to have some amazing texture and some amazing colors and light. This tutorial is brought to you by a segment from my new course on how to create 2D game assets for your games. In the course, you'll learn how to create nine different game assets in a whole bunch of different styles. The course is packed with over seven and a half hours of clear content, and I'll take you through everything every step of the way. Now, if you're interested in taking this course once you go through this tutorial, go ahead and click on the link in the description. Now, since you're viewing this YouTube video today, I'm actually going to offer you a huge mega discount on the course. So thanks for watching and let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. All right, in this section of the course, we're gonna build a really cool sword asset. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have a document and the size of it is 1080 by 1920 and the resolution is set to 150. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer above this and I'm gonna use this layer to do my sketch on. So switching over to my paintbrush tool, I'm going to go ahead and just start sketching out what I want my sword to look like. So I'm going to start out with the bud of my sword. So I think I'm going to have it rectangular like so. And then I might add a little bit more detail like a bottom piece and a top piece. Something like that. And this might be a little bit too small so I'm going to bring up the size just a little bit. And then I'm going to paint in the handle. I'll paint in the guard. Um, I think I think I'll have it curve up like this. Now remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is going to be your guide for creating the actual shapes that will make up your sword. So don't worry if this isn't perfect. You just want to get those basic shapes out. And then we'll add the blade in. So I think I just want the blade to be a straight blade. So something like so. All right, cool. So now we have our sketch. Let's go ahead and move that to the center of our page. I'm also going to add a little bit of detail in there just so I know what we're gonna be doing. So I think I'll have a line going straight up like so to divide the two planes on this sword blade. And then over here, we're also going to have this wrapped in leather straps, like so. Great. Now let's go ahead and start building the shapes for the sword. So I'm gonna add a new layer. And on this new layer, I'm going to start with this part of the handle because that's going to be behind everything else. So I'm gonna use my marquee tool and I'm gonna make a rectangular selection, like so. Then I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. And I'm gonna fill it in with almost like a reddish violet and I'm gonna grab my color from somewhere about here, maybe a little bit darker, somewhere down there should be good. And I'll go ahead and fill that in. Next, I'm gonna use my transform tool to first pull this down so it's at level. And then I'm gonna turn on my warp transform. So I'll turn that on and now I'll drag that to that corner. And I'm just going to get this into its correct shape. Then we can go ahead and hit enter. Next, let's work on the bud of our sword. So I'm gonna add a new layer above this. And first, I'm gonna create this shape right here. So just using my rectangular tool, I'll go ahead and create that. And then I'm gonna fill that in with a dark gray. So I'm gonna come to somewhere about here and I'm gonna come more towards my blues. So somewhere in there, then I'll hit okay and fill that in. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more shape to it. So using my transform tool, I'm gonna go ahead and warp that. And I just want to bring this bottom area in just the tiniest bit. Same with this bottom area and same on the top. This is just to give it a little bit more of an interesting shape than just a rectangle. Then we can go ahead and hit enter. 
Now these two are not lined up very well, so what I'll do is I'll grab this and I'll move it over until it clicks into the center, like so. Next, I'm gonna add this piece that goes on top, so I'll add a new layer above this, and using my rectangular marquee tool, I'll make a selection like so, and then I'll fill that in with my gray, and then I'll use my grab and move tool to get that into the center. Now let's go ahead and move up to the guard, so I'll add a new layer, and I'm going to first add this piece of the guard. So I'll fill that in with gray, and then I'll make sure that that's centered. So pretty sure I'm good right there. Then using my lasso tool, I'm gonna go ahead and click and basically trace out the shape that I've drawn here. And then I can go ahead and come down and reconnect that like so. Then I'm gonna add a new layer, so this is on its own separate layer, and I'll fill that in with the dark gray. Next, I'm gonna make a copy of this, but rather than copying the layer, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the image on the same layer. So I'm gonna switch over to my grab and move tool, then holding down Alt on my keyboard, or Option if you're on a Mac, I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag that, and that allows me to make a copy of that on the same layer. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and select that and turn on my transform tool. And then I'm gonna flip that horizontal. And I'll hit enter. And now I can go ahead and drag that over and move it into place, just like so. Let's go ahead and turn off our background sketch to see how this looks so far. Great, everything's looking pretty symmetrical. Now we can go ahead and move on to the blade. So I'm gonna add one new layer and I'm gonna add it underneath this handle right here. It's going to be the very bottom layer. And the handle is actually going to be very easy to create. All we have to do is use our lasso tool and we're going to come straight up by holding down shift. And once we get up here to this point, all we're gonna do is we're just going to trace that out with our lasso tool. And remember to use really small lines to get that curve in there. And then we're just going to come straight down like so. And then we're gonna fill that in with a blue. So I'm gonna come into my blues, probably want somewhere about here, and I'm in that range of my blues. I hit okay, and then I'm gonna fill that in. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab that with my Alt key or Option key and drag the copy over. Then I'm going to select it, transform it, and flip it horizontal. Then I can go ahead and move that into place and get it all lined up. Great, now let's go ahead and turn off our background sketch and make sure that blade is lined up so it's not. So what we need to do is first we need to merge these two layers. So now that blade is one layer and then we need to drag this over until it lines up correctly. So right there is perfect. All right, that brings us to the end of this lecture. So in this lecture, you learned how to draw your sword and then you learned how to lay out the colors and the shape for it. Remember that you wanna make everything on separate layers because when we go in there, we're going to be painting on clipping layer masks. And so we want to be able to paint individually on each part of the sword. Thanks for watching this lecture and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. All right, before we get painting on our sword, we wanna make sure that everything looks good to us. So as I was looking at this between lectures, I thought that the sword looked a little bit too skinny and I thought this bottom part of the sword looks too big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first transform this layer that my blade is on, and I'm just going to stretch it out like so, and holding down Alt while I do that, that's gonna stretch it out on both sides. So I'm gonna stretch it out to about there should be good. Maybe one more, let's see how that looks. All right, that looks good. Let's hit Enter. Then I'm gonna shrink my handle down and my bud down too. So I'm gonna go find those layers, so let's see. There's one of them, and then that one, and that one. So I'm gonna select all of those, turn my transform tool on, and hold down Shift and Alt at the same time to shrink it from the middle, and also shrink it in proportion. So I'll shrink it to right about there, should be good. And I'm gonna stretch it up, like so, because I want my handle to still be as long as it was before. And I might drag that down a little bit. All right, great, let's hit Enter. Perfect, I like that shape much better. Now, let's go ahead and get painting. So we're gonna start with the bud of the sword. So I'm gonna go find that my bottom layer for that, which is that guy. 
and I'll add a new layer above that, and then I'm going to right click and turn that into a clipping layer mask. Then I can go ahead and zoom in there and begin to paint. So I'm gonna grab the color white because our metal is going to be completely silver. And so we're gonna use white as our base highlight color. Then I'm gonna bring my brush opacity down to 20% and then I'll begin painting. So I'm gonna start by adding a highlight to this top area like so because the light would probably be hitting it and we'd be seeing just the very ledge of that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer on top of that like so to really start bringing in that silver color. And what we wanna do from here is since this is going to be cylinder shaped, we want the highlight to be in the middle to be the brightest and the further out it goes, it needs to get darker. So I'll start out here like so coming right up to that edge but leaving a little bit of a dark area on the edge. And then I'm gonna add another one a little bit further in and I'll keep doing this. And if you miss a few spots like I did back there, that's fine. That's just going to add more texture to your artwork. Now we wanna keep doing this until this middle area is basically as white as it can be. And we can add a little bit more on the outer edge area. So just like so. Now I think I got that outer edge area a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my dark gray and paint a little bit of that back in. And then I might add a little bit of a shadow down here and a little bit of texture, just because it may be reflecting the top surface of this piece of metal. So that's why we're adding that in. Then let's go ahead and reselect our white and we're gonna repaint in this top area like so. Perfect, now let's move down to the bottom area. So I'm going to add some paint in like so, and then I'll add a little bit more in like so. And then there's going to be a little bit of a shadow being cast from this large piece of metal on top of it. So I'm gonna start adding paint in right in the middle like so. So we're not gonna have a shadow on this bottom part because as it turns into the bottom, it's going to create a little bit more of a shadow and we're also gonna have less light underneath here, like I said, because there's going to be a cast shadow. So that's why we're only painting through this middle area. And then we wanna start painting in the center only and really start making that white. Great. Now I got these edges a little bit too light again, so I'm gonna go ahead and select my dark gray color and start painting that in. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna grab a darker version of this gray. So I'll come down to about there. And I'm gonna add a little bit more shadow underneath here. Now, we're gonna add a little bit of rust to our sword. So I'm gonna come into my colors and I'm, we're first going to start off with sort of an orangish red color. And we're gonna make it really bright. So somewhere in there, I'll hit okay. Then using our brush tool and still being at 20% opacity, we're gonna go ahead and start painting in this bottom area, like so. So that's our first layer of the rust color. Now let's go ahead and switch back in there and let's come a little bit more towards the yellowish oranges and we're going to bring this down a little bit darker and a little bit more saturated, hit okay. And then we're gonna brush a little bit more of that in. And then lastly, we're gonna grab an even darker version of that, so somewhere way over here, more saturated and way more darker. Then I'm going to bring my brush opacity up to 80%, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint in some small spots down here like so. And that brown might be a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna lighten that a little bit more to about there, and then we'll paint that in. Cool, so that just adds a little bit more texture and something a little bit more interesting to look at when you look at the sword. It gives it a lot more character. Now let's go ahead and move on to this part of the sword. So I'm gonna come up to that layer, which is this one right here, and I'll add a new layer above that, right click and create clipping mask. Then I'm gonna switch back over to my white color, and then we'll start off with this top part. So we'll add a highlight across there. And then we can go ahead and start adding in this center area. So the more interesting brush strokes you can do and the more squiggly it looks and whatever, the more interesting your painting is going to look. So I do suggest that you try to keep it relatively messy, even though you still want it to look realistic, you also want it to have that painting style. So it's okay if you keep it pretty messy.
then I'm gonna go ahead and reselect this dark gray and I'm gonna go ahead and start painting in some of that shadow back onto my edge like so great then I'm gonna go ahead and select my rust color so I'm gonna come into my reddish oranges come up to about there and then I'll go ahead and start painting that in on the bottom just like so, and then we'll grab a little bit darker version of that, maybe a little bit more towards the yellows. We'll go ahead and paint that in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab that even darker version of that, so somewhere in there. And then putting my brush opacity at 80%, I'm gonna go ahead and paint in those little small rust spots. And then I can even bring my brush opacity down to 40% to get some that are a little less strong. Great. Now let's go ahead and continue painting this and working with it until we get it looking the way we want. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna select this mid color right here, then switching back over to my brush and putting my brush opacity at 100%, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of paint that area in with a solid gray color. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select the next light color and I'll go ahead and paint that area in like so on both sides, and then I'm gonna select this color over here and paint in this area. And this just makes it look a lot more like paint rather than painting with transparency, you're painting with opaque colors and that gives it a lot more of a realistic painting look. Then I can go ahead and do the same down here. So I might select that color, paint some of that in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select this dark gray color and paint my gray back in on that edge. And then put my brush opacity at 20% and I might paint a little bit more into these bottom areas like so. Awesome. Now I'm gonna switch back over to my white and kind of blend this in just a little bit more with my brush being at 20%. Perfect. And lastly, I wanna go ahead and add that white back in at the top. So I'm gonna put my brush at 80% and I'll go ahead and paint that back in just like so. And I might have a little bit come down this edge also. Next, let's switch back down to the layer that we were painting before. And we're just going to add a few more touches and highlights. So still just using my white brush, I'll just add those in. And then I might grab some of these mid colors and then putting my brush at 100%, I'll go ahead and paint some of those mid colors in just to give it some more opaqueness. Now let's go ahead and zoom out and see how that looks. I think we could use a little bit more shadow underneath here. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. And on this layer, I'll go ahead and select this dark gray color and go ahead and paint some of that in, just like so. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select this darker gray color and I'm gonna add that back in right there. And I might add some of that more dark gray on these edges and also along this bottom. Putting my brush opacity at 20%, I'll just paint some of that in so we get a little bit more of a shadow on that bottom area. And I might add a little bit more shadow on this edge also, and right there. And then I think the rust is a little bit too much on this top part. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to that layer, select my white, go ahead and sort of blend that in more, especially down here towards the bottom. Great. Now we have this really cool metal look for the bud of our sword. So let's zoom out and see how that looks. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and paint the handle for our sword. So let's zoom in there, find that layer. So we'll come down, that's it right there. We'll add a new layer above it and create a clipping mask. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select this color we have there and I'm gonna find a lighter version of that. And I'm also going to make it a little bit warmer by coming up just a little bit more towards my reds. And then we can go ahead and use our paintbrush and at 20% opacity, I'm gonna go ahead and paint in some large areas where I want each band to be. And these are the bands that are going to be wrapped around the handle. Great. Now let's go ahead and keep layering those. And we want the center, just like the metal part, to be the lightest part. And as it gets more to the edge, it's going to round around our form. And so it's going to get more shadow. Oh, 
also the light source is going to be coming from the top and so we're going to add a little bit more highlight on the top of each one of these straps Great. Now let's go ahead and switch over to an even lighter version of this. So somewhere about there, maybe just the tiniest bit more towards the reds. Hit OK. And then we're going to go ahead and bring our brush size down. And we're going to mostly paint on this top area like so. We're going to leave this area out because it's going to have a cast shadow on it. So right about here and up, you're not going to see any highlight. So I might add a little bit of highlight right there, but everything above that is not going to get any more highlight. All right, great. Next, let's go ahead and grab a really highlight highlight color. So I'm gonna come way up here, and then I'm gonna come way more into my oranges. So I want this to almost be a peach color, maybe a little bit more towards the saturated side, and a little bit down towards the reds. So somewhere about there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start painting those highlights in. And that's still not really saturated enough for me, so I'm gonna saturate that color even more. Perfect. Let's go ahead and start painting with that. All right, I think that looks much better. And then let's grab this middle color right there and let's lighten that a little bit because I think we need some more highlight in there. It's a little bit too dark and we're not giving it enough form, so I'm gonna go ahead and start painting that in like so. Next, I'm gonna grab a shadow color. So I'm gonna grab our mid color, our background color, and I'm gonna bring that down so it's even darker, maybe a little bit more towards the purples. And then we're gonna go ahead and start brushing with that. We'll brush along these edges like so. And we'll also add a shadow up here. Like I said, there's going to be a drop shadow, so we can add that in right now. And then we might add a little bit of shadow around here. And then we're going to bring some of that shadow into these creases on both sides. Perfect. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab this peach highlight color and I'm just going to add one last really bright highlight for that, so somewhere about there. And then I'm going to put my brush opacity at 50%, and I'll go ahead and paint in a really bright one on top of each one of these, just like so. Now we can go ahead and select these colors and start painting with them at 100% opacity, so I might fill in that area and that area with the color. Same with there and there. And then I'll select in this middle color, paint this area in. And again, this is just to make it look more like a real painting. And then down here at the bottom areas, I'm gonna go ahead and select that mid color, so like right there. And then I'll go ahead and paint that in. Same with there, just to blend that in a little bit more. Now we can add in a few more things to make it a little bit more interesting. We can add more texture in there by painting lines like so, you know, kind of getting more into the shadows with the lighter colors and then grabbing the shadows and getting more into the lighter colors with those colors. So just a little bit more interesting. All right, that brings us to the end of this lecture. So in this lecture, you learned how to paint the butt of your sword and the handle of your sword. So just remember, it's just like when we painted our other hand-painted assets, that you want to start with your darker colors, and then you want to start layering those up with highlighted colors. Thanks for watching this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. 
All right, let's go ahead and paint the guard for our sword. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select all the layers that make up my handle. And then I'm gonna put those into a folder for now so they're out of the way. Then I can come up to the part of my sword that makes up the guard. And we're gonna start with this bottom part. Now, this is going to be very similar to painting this bottom part that we did before. The only difference is that this surface was rounded and this one is going to be flat. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a new layer above this layer, and then we're gonna turn it into a clipping mask. And then we're gonna grab our color white and we're gonna start adding in those highlights. So because this top piece is over this bottom piece, there's going to be a cast shadow just like there is right here and also down here. So let's go ahead and make sure we paint that in. Oops, make sure your brush opacity is at 20%. And then we're just going to paint through the middle like so. And we can do another layer of that. And we'll just continue to do this until we get it pretty white. And we can change up the direction of our brush strokes to make it look more interesting. So remember that because this is a flat surface, you want the, the shine on your metal to be consistent throughout the whole thing. You don't want it to start to fade off on these edges because that would make it look like it was a cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and select this dark gray color here and paint along this bottom like so because you would still be seeing a little bit of shadow on that bottom edge. And then I might add just a little tiny bit of shadow on this edge, but this is not shadow that will be blended in to our highlight. It's going to be a pretty hard line. And that's just because it'd be shadow on those edges. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of a drop shadow on this area. So just like so. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my rust color. So I'm gonna come down into my reddish oranges, maybe a little bit lower, grab a color from about there. And then I'll go ahead and brush some of that in along my bottom edge. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my darker rust color. So somewhere down here, I can go ahead and start painting in with that. And I can turn my brush opacity up to 50% or 80% if you want, but I'm gonna stick with 50% because I don't want it too bright. Great. Now let's go ahead and move up to the top part of our guard. So I'm gonna go ahead and come up to that layer and we need to merge these two layers together so that they're one. And then I'm gonna add a layer above that and turn it into a clipping layer mask. So now let's go ahead and get painting on this. So switching over to my white color I'll go ahead and start by doing the highlight on this top area. Another thing is that this metal and the sword itself doesn't have to be exactly perfect because this is kind of an old looking sword. And so back in the days when they would make swords um, where blacksmiths would actually hammer them out of hot steel, um, they would have little imperfections and stuff. So it's okay if it has imperfections. It actually makes it look a little bit more interesting and look more like it has character. I'm gonna paint down to here. And I'm gonna try to leave the bottom of this a dark gray so that we have a shadow on that bottom edge. I'm gonna bring my brush size up a little bit just so I can fill this a little bit faster. Now I want these edges of my guard to actually taper off a little bit. So the way I'm gonna make it look like it's tapering off is by making the middle a little bit brighter than the outside. So I'll go to there with my highlight and then I'll come in a little bit closer towards the center and I'll keep doing that till I get to the center and I get to white. And it may be looking like it's tapering off a little bit too much, so I might kind of come back out there a little bit more. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select this light gray that I have out here, and then using my brush tool, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting with that just to get some more texture in there. 
because I don't want it to just be solid white. And I can also paint over this dark gray under here because I don't want it to be that dark. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and select our rust color. So we'll come down into our orangish red, grab that color, maybe a little bit more saturated. And then I can go ahead and paint with that along my bottom. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab a darker, more saturated color and I'll paint in with that. And then I can grab a little bit darker version of that and bring my brush opacity up to 5% and I can go ahead and paint in some little pieces of rust like so. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and paint in some darker gray on these edges. So I'm gonna select this darker gray here and I'm just going to paint some of that in just like so. Same with over here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select my white and paint a little bit more white in the center area. And I'm also going to fill this top area back in with white. And then I'm gonna add white down these edges. Same with here, perfect. Now I'm also going to add a bounce light on the bottom of this part of the sword. So the way I'm gonna do that is by grabbing my rust color and I'm gonna go ahead and bring my brush opacity up to 50% and I'm gonna brush along this bottom edge like so. And just on these edges. I'm gonna do the same thing underneath here on this part of the sword. And this just makes it look a little bit more interesting. Even if you don't know where the bounce light is coming from, it's going to make it look a lot more realistic if you can add a little bit of bounce light somewhere. So I'll go ahead and come into my folder also, and I'm gonna add that down here because I didn't do it down there. So we'll start with this part. We'll add it in right along this bottom area. And then we're gonna to come to that top part and we'll come right along this bottom area also. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and close that folder and come back into our guard folder. And now we can start selecting colors and painting with them at full opacity. So I'm gonna start with this color right here and then putting my brush opacity at 100%. I'm gonna go ahead and start painting with that. Same with on this side. And then I can go ahead and select the next color and start painting with that. And then I'm gonna start selecting this rust color that's sort of a mix between my white and my rust and I can start painting in those areas just like so. Awesome, let's go ahead and zoom out and see how that looks. Pretty good. That brings us to the end of this lecture. So in this lecture, you learned how to paint the guard of your sword, and you also learned how to add a little bit of bounce light in there to make it look more realistic. Now, once we get a gray background in there and it's more neutral, you're gonna see that bounce light a lot more and it'll look a lot better. Thanks for watching this lecture and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. All right, now let's get to the fun part of this project, which is painting the blade. So before we do that, let's select all of our layers that make up the guard of our sword. And let's put those into a folder. And now let's come down to our sword layer and we'll add a new layer above that and create a clipping mask out of it. And now we can begin painting. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to select this blue color here. And then we wanna find a little bit more of a saturated version of that and a little tiny bit darker. So about there should be good. And then we're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and start brushing that in at 20% opacity. We're gonna brush down to the bottom and slowly get less and less. And we'll just continue to do that over and over again until we get it looking the way we want. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and reselect my base color and I'm gonna make it a little bit more saturated and this time we're gonna make it a little bit more lighter. So about there should be good. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint some of that in, like so, right here in the middle of my sword. Great. 
great. Now you can hardly see any difference, but there is difference there. There's more texture and there's more blues in there. So it makes it a lot more interesting to the eye and your subconscious picks it up. Next, we're gonna go ahead and start painting with more of an aqua color. So I'm gonna come into my aqua blues, somewhere around there should be good. And I'm gonna make this really light, so somewhere in there. And then we can go ahead and start painting. So I'm gonna paint in this top area like so. And I'm not actually gonna bring my brush opacity down to 10% because I want it to be even lighter. And then I can go ahead and start painting this in. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit even more of an aqua. So I'm gonna come down into my aquas and make this a little bit more saturated. And I'm gonna paint just a little bit more aqua in there just to make this look more interesting. Perfect. Next, let's go ahead and grab some solid white. And we're gonna paint down this edge of our sword, just like so. Now, if you're having a hard time painting that straight line, you can go ahead and click and then hold down shift and then come down to here. And then you're just going to need to blend this area in a little bit more at the bottom. But we're just gonna go ahead and paint in this half of our sword with white. And so starting at this top area, it's going to be a solid, solid white. And as it gets lower on the sword, it's going to start blending in with the blue. So I can bring my brush opacity back up to 20% now. And then I can start blending this in. Actually, I'm gonna bring it back down to 10% so I can blend it better down here. And then the further up we go, we can keep turning up the brush opacity. So now I have it at 40% and I'm just gonna start filling stuff in. And then we can go ahead and select this mid color, and start painting with that. And I'm also painting with this mid color at 40% opacity and that helps blend it in. Go ahead and select the next one and then the next color. And then I can select this color right here and blend that in. Great. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this more aqua of a blue. I'm gonna go ahead and start painting with that down here. And I might even just lighten that just the tiniest bit. So I'll come up to about there and I'll start painting with that down here. I'm gonna put my brush opacity back to 10%. And then we wanna start blending that in. So then we can reselect our base color, start blending that in down here blending that all the way up into the white. And then we might grab our white again and start blending that white into that blue. And we'll just continue to do this all the way down until we get it blended correctly. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna grab this white up here and go ahead and paint this edge in a little bit better. And then I got a little bit of white over this edge. We don't want that, so I'm gonna go ahead and select my blue go ahead and paint over that a few times like so. Great. All right, so now we have the base for our sword reflection. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit more highlight onto this side. So I'm gonna select my bright aqua color and I'm just going to paint some of that in. So I'm painting it almost right into the middle and I'm kind of leaving out these edges so they're a little bit darker. And then we can grab this darker blue color and paint a little bit on top of that just to give it a little bit more texture. Cool. Next, what we wanna do is we're gonna grab our white again and then bring our brush opacity up to 50%. I'm gonna bring my brush size down now. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint this middle line just like so. I'm actually gonna bring my brush opacity down to 30%. We're gonna paint that all the way down, just like so. And then right here, I'm gonna add sort of a little divot in our sword blade. So I'll paint it like so, and then we're gonna come back in here and add a little bit of shadow in there. And I can continue coming all the way down to the bottom. Now, my line got a little bit off. It's not centered right now, but that's okay. You can work a little bit harder to make sure your line stays centered, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. And we just wanna paint that all the way down the middle. 
and we don't want it to just be one hard line. We want it to have a little bit of a wispy brush look and we want it to blend a little bit into our blues. So it's not just a hard, hard line. We'll paint in this highlight here. Um, and then we're going to paint in the edges of our sword. So we can go ahead and zoom out so we can see better. And we're gonna paint in this edge of our sword with white all the way up till we get to about there. And then we'll just continue to do this back and forth, layering it until we get it to a solid white. And you can also add a few lines coming in like so just to make it look more interesting, little scratches and stuff. Then let's do the same thing on the other side. So we'll just begin to paint that in. And as it gets into this white area, we don't even have to follow it all the way up. Awesome. Next, let's go ahead and add in a few more scratches onto our sword. So I might add one down here. I might make that a little bit lighter. And then I might also add one right here going across this. And then I might add one right here. And again, they don't have to be super prominent. They can be pretty light. Next, we're going to go ahead and select our darkest blue color. So I'm going to grab this color right here. And then I'm going to start painting in on these scratches and divots. So I'll zoom in there and I'm gonna bring my brush opacity up to 50% and I can start painting that in. Then we can paint one in right here. So we're gonna put it on the top side since the light is gonna be coming from the top. So we want the highlight to be on the bottom of our scratches. We can paint the shadow on this guy. Um, and then we can paint the shadow up here on this guy also. Next, we're gonna grab an even darker color. So I'm gonna grab my blue and darken that to about there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start painting in some darker shadows, just like so. We can add a little bit in there also. Um, we can add definitely some in here because the blue we used was almost the same exact blue as what's already down here. And then we'll come up to here paint a little bit into there. Perfect. Next, we're going to add a few little divots in the edges of our sword. So I'm going to add one right here and up here. So let's zoom in there. And using our dark blue color, we'll go ahead and paint that in. So I'm just going to paint in a dark spot like so. And you can bring your brush opacity up to 100% to do this. So there's one. And then the other one is going to be up here. And I'm going to make this a little bit more saturated just to make it a little bit more intense next to this white. We can go ahead and paint one in right there. Now it kind of has a curve to it and I don't want that. So I'm going to select my white and go ahead and kind of paint that curve out. And I can go ahead and select this blue again, kind of paint that divot back in there and get rid of some of that curve. Great, I like something like that. Perfect. Now let's come back over to this divot and we're gonna go ahead and paint in that bottom highlight right there. And then we can also add a little bit of highlight on top. Let's zoom out and see how that looks. Awesome. All right, now let's go ahead and change our background color to gray. So we can have a, see what this looks like with a neutral color. Awesome, pretty good. So you see how that really kind of transforms the way the sword looks. Because really, when you're on a background in a game, it's not really gonna probably be white. It's probably gonna have colors and different values. And so by adding a neutral color, like a middle gray, that really shows you what your piece of artwork looks like on a neutral background. Now, if you wanted to take it a step further, let's say that this sword is given to your player while they're playing the game. So if they stumble upon it, a whole screen comes up and it fills the screen and says, you get this sword and it shows the sword. 
Maybe you want it to look more dramatic. And so what you can do is we can go ahead and select all these layers, make a copy of them, then we're gonna merge those layers together. And then we can take all these other layers and put them into a folder so we have those as backup. Then we can go ahead and turn that folder off and coming back up to our flattened layer, we can go ahead and come down to effects and do outer glow. And now you see you can add a really cool outer glow to that. So let's select a color. This orange looks pretty nice. We might try a different version of it, or we might even try yellow. I think orange looks pretty good. I'll hit okay. And then we can bring the opacity up, see how that looks. Maybe a little bit too much, so maybe about there. And we can change the size. We can do whatever we want. And so that just makes it look a lot more interesting and a lot more dramatic. Once you have that set the way you want, you can go ahead and hit OK. And now your asset is complete. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'll be sending you many more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.